Dear Patriots, before the news starts, please, subscribe to our patriotic channel by clicking the subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up to this video. Don't forget to leave your opinion below in the comments section. Share the news on Facebook and Twitter so you friends see it. Thank you. Sally Khan says we must fit men for toxic masculinity, changes tune when Bill Clinton is mentioned. CNN's Sally Khan recently wrote an article on how we need to do a better job of stopping toxic masculinity from getting power. The article was clearly directed at Donald Trump. However, she had a completely different attitude when it came to the women that Bill Clinton allegedly raped. We must together open our eyes. Donald Trump called for the expansion of extreme vetting for people entering the United States. Why aren't we extreme vetting men who are here? Why aren't we talking about toxic masculinity? Why aren't we, as a society, seriously scrutinizing men and masculinity, and how the way we raise our children, treat our workers and form our policies perpetuates behavior we say we don't want? The answer, of course, is also the problem. It is because men wield disproportionate power and privilege that we have failed to question this reality, and improve upon it, in any serious way," she wrote. During a CNN interview former Trump campaign adviser Jack Kingston brought up the women that Bill Clinton has assaulted. Jack, the difference between Bill Clinton and Donald Trump is Bill Clinton was impeached. So we aired that one as a public. And also, he's not currently the president, said Khan. He was impeached for perjury, responded Kingston. Khan suddenly lost her cool. Listen this is fine. I'm fine watching this Roy Moore thing go down. Because with condolences to the poor statesman of course, the women who he has abused and made suffer we are watching the destruction of the Republican Party before our very eyes. They are doing themselves systemic damage for generations. And I'm going to be honest, I'm here for it, she yelled. Woman takes action after exposing how hospital forced her to participate in an abortion. A group of nurses spoke up in favor of the Conscience Protection Act of 2017, an act that would allow healthcare providers like nurses and doctors to sue if they're coerced into participating in abortions or if they face discrimination at work for refusing to do so. One nurse, Kathy DiCarlo, shared the horrifying story of how she was forced to participate in an abortion. In August of 2004, I was hired as an operating room nurse at a New York hospital, a hospital which receives millions of dollars in federal funding. When I was hired, the hospital assured me that I would never have to compromise my conscience, and participate in an abortion. For five years, I enjoyed serving patients and received exemplary performance reviews. But on May 24, 2009, the hospital went back on their word, said DiCarlo. I was preparing for what I thought was going to be a common procedure following a miscarriage only to realize that I was being asked to perform an abortion on a live, 22-week-old unborn baby," she said. I reminded her in tears about the hospital's legal obligation to never force me to participate in an abortion, but to always find a substitute nurse, but she refused. My supervisor insisted that I had to do the abortion, and that if I didn't assist, I would be charged with insubordination and abandoning my patient. My nursing career and ability to care for patients and provide for my family would be over," she said. I'll never forget that day as I watched in horror as a doctor dismembered and removed the baby's bloody limbs, and I had to account for all the pieces," she shared. Do you hope the law gets passed? Mar shames Donna Brazile for exposing Hillary corruption during election it doesn't matter. It's over. During the Democratic primaries, Bill Maher was once a fan of Bernie Sanders over Hillary Clinton. However, now, he is defending Hillary, saying it doesn't matter that she rigged the primary against Sanders and shaming Donna Brazile for coming forward. In an interview, Maher accused Brazile of being stuck in 2016. Can we put the Bernie Hillary thing aside? That great divide. I mean, that's what all the controversy was with your book, that the elections were, 
the primaries were rigged, said Marr. And, you know, it doesn't matter, first of all, now, it's over. And also, the policy differences between the Bernie folks and the Hillary folks were really small to begin with, said Marr. So Marr just doesn't care that the entire Democratic Party is corrupt. Which is good news for us conservatives. Because, while people like Bill Maher say it doesn't matter, the American people care. Brazile made headlines when she proved Hillary's connection with the DNC. I at last found the document that described it all, the joint fundraising agreement between the DNC, the Hillary Victory Fund, and Hillary for America, wrote Brazile. The agreement, signed by Amy Dacey, the former CEO of the DNC, and Robbie Muck with a copy to Mark Elias specified that in exchange for raising money and investing in the DNC, Hillary would control the party's finances, strategy, and all the money raised. Her campaign had the right of refusal of who would be the party communications director, and it would make final decisions on all the other staff. The DNC also was required to consult with the campaign about all other staffing, budgeting, data, analytics, and mailings, wrote Brazile. CNN's Anna Navarro explains how hating Trump has turned her into a black person. We knew CNN's Anna Navarro was nuts, but this is just ridiculous. According to Navarro, she is actually an African American because according to her, African Americans don't like Trump, and she also doesn't like Trump. This is not a joke. Zero percent African Americans support Trump in polls, I knew I had to be black. Took, Ancestry.com test. So excited. 4% black. Explains a lot, she wrote. You know who else conflates race with ideology? The KKK. The KKK and Anna Navarro would get along very well. Also, clearly saying that 0% of African Americans support Trump is fake news. You just need to find one black person who supports Trump and you can prove she is wrong. Different polls also challenge her claim. Trump's numbers improve significantly among young African American voters, 42% approve and 53% disapprove. This number is up significantly since our last oversample in July, at that time 33% approved and 57% disapproved, says a poll by Zobi. Anna Navarro is an outspoken critic against Trump and Republicans. At the same time, Navarro says she is a Republican. This is most likely a ploy to convince viewers that CNN has people from all over the political spectrum. But CNN and Anna Navarro aren't fooling anyone. Alec Baldwin claims Melania loves his Trump impression, Melania sets him straight in brutal response. Alec Baldwin is a failing actor who has tried to become relevant again by making fun of Donald Trump. For months, Baldwin has dressed as President Trump on Saturday Night Live in order to mock him. However, he took a step too far when he claimed that Melania Trump loves his impression. I forget where we were, but somebody said, I spoke with so-and-so, who spoke with so-and-so who's in the administration or was in the administration, and he told me that Melania loves your Trump imitation thinks it's the funniest thing in the world, and he hates the fact she thinks you're funny despises you even more because she thinks you're funny," said Baldwin during a radio interview. Melania responded to these moronic allegations in a brutal way. That is not true, which is why Mr. Baldwin has no actual names to go with his bizarre assertion, said Melania's spokeswoman. Despite being called out as a liar, telling a very obvious lie, Baldwin doubled down on his claims. And I'm telling you, this guy told me that somebody very high up in the administration, or formerly high up in the administration, Trump's on the phone telling her social secretary what to say to the press, but Melania's in the other room watching SNL, he said. Wrong. Melania would never watch that garbage show. MSNBC has guessed literally repent for his past right-wing stupidity. 
MSNBC's Joy Reid interviewed author Frank Schaefer. Schaefer was once a right-wing conservative who decided to become liberal partway through Obama's presidency. He now uses the fact that he switched parties as a way to bash conservatives. The healthy future is sitting around that table with you, said Schaefer, explaining that because there are a lot of minorities at MSNBC it is a better place. There are black faces there, white faces, Asian faces, he said. You've got one token old white fart here who repents his past right-wing stupidity. I look at what's around your table and say if two lines were forming, I would be running in that direction. That's the healthy, hopeful redemptive future, he said. Back in the day when my dad and my were going around the country establishing the religious right based on our any abortion stand, one I've moved a long way from since. The whole idea was bringing America basket to some moral stand said Schaefer. Think about the Republican Party now. Throw some words out that are associated with them, mass shootings, Milo, Trump, Moore, Bannon, rape, child molesting, neo-Nazis, white supremacy. What the hell is going on with the Republican Party? He said. That's just disgusting.